I saw a, um, I don't know, it was a Tumblr thing. It was like, oh, thank God they haven't cast the conventionally attractive six-pack white male as their leads, which I get as a compliment, but it's a very backhanded compliment. Who decided that was what we deem as attractive? Who has decided that but that's what we deem as good? Like, that's a lot of effort. There's so many scenes that people have become absolutely obsessed with. But there must have been some really incredible moments that weren't filmed yeah. as well that will really stay with you. What's a moment that really stuck with you and you'll keep with you forever from filming that first season? There was a time when we were at the bowling alley scene and me and Yaz were stood just waiting to go on. And she just turned to me and was like, we're going to be friends forever, right? And I was like, yeah. And then she just gave me a big hug. It was just really sweet and it was so lovely and it was such a nice culmination of sort of like everything we'd done and it was just it makes me feel all warm and warm and cuddly every time I think of that moment mm, that's such an amazing moment to carry around with you it must that's so special yeah yeah it is and I guess as well when you're dealing with an overnight fame those friendships are so important for keeping you grounded keeping you <laughs> on the straight and narrow, understanding what's going on and having people to talk to about it as well. Because it must be crazy to be having this level of success right now while you're still at home, doing your A-levels, doing all these normal things in the same environment mm -hmm. that you were in before. God. How great is it to have that level of success but also still be in such a familiar space in, in unfamiliar times, really? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely very grounding. It's definitely keeping my head on the ground and to have like me and Kit always like we'll keep each other in check be like if anything happens it's nice to have each other to talk to about it and but as well have our, I've got my first day level in four days so that's something that's definitely keeping my head on the ground it will actually in a textbook but yeah but um it's so nice to have I was gonna say it's so nice to have my A-levels to sort of keep me grounded but it's not I, they're awful and I hate them <laughs> but it's nice to sort of have that sense of normality to hang on to otherwise i'm scared i'd be scared that my head would just be out in space but i'm very ready for them to be over i just love how exams have become an escapism for you that's <laughs> that, that's hilarious i actually can't wait for them to be over i say they're escapism but i think i'm slightly grateful to be back at school in a sort of a last sense of normality before i try and take this journey and make what i can with it mm. but also hopefully i won't ever need my a-levels so Part of me is like, what's really the point? <laughs> Fingers crossed. I'm sure you're not going to need them, but it's always good to have <laughs> yeah. them in the back pocket. Yeah. And I guess as well, amongst the real positives to success, there is obviously the downsides to it in the sense that there's trolls, there's negativity that you see. How have you managed that aspect? Yeah, I think it's all about like setting boundaries for yourself and sort of figuring out what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. Because... I found that once you get into the Bukai, everyone wants a piece of you, whether that's good or bad. And so it's just sort of about feeling comfortable to say no is something that's really hard and I've had to get used to. And I, I'm, I'm a person who, I hate the idea that I've let anyone down. I, I think on the first few weeks, I sort of found myself looking for the bad comments and looking for things that would upset me. I don't know why, but I think it's a very natural human thing that people do. Um, and so I think I've definitely, I found, I don't look, I don't look, I don't look at really Twitter as much anymore because, or TikTok or my Instagram, because I find that I find it a bit overwhelming and I find it quite, quite a lot. And that doesn't mean that I can't see all the nice things people are saying. I just, I just have to do it in, in measures. Otherwise it will just become a little bit overwhelming. I'll never turn off my phone and I'll never live my life, which is not good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think it's amazing. The reaction to the show has been incredible and it's been so nice to have the show get its attention, but it's also been a little bit overwhelming as well. But it's so nice to have like Kit and Will and Yaz and Bash and Toby and everyone to sort of talk to about that and you can understand it as well. I think that's what's so special about the show as well. When I was watching it, I thought it was so great that there's this group of teenagers who are talking so openly and honestly about their feelings and it's such a kind of undercurrent to the show but it's so powerful yeah. in that way they're all talking about their feelings all the time and I think it really shows how empowering open and honest chats can be right have you found that in your own life too 
Yeah, I think I think if anything, it's a, it's an authentic portrayal of like the Gen Z generation because I think that in my teenage years, I, I've noticed that as we've got older and as society's moved on, people are more honest about their emotions, and and, and it's a great thing. I think that it shows that society's changing into in a way that people are more open about the mental health. Shows like Heartstopper are part of that change and and help make that change even more. If we show a positive portrayal of someone talking about their mental health and talking about how they're feeling, then hopefully that would help other people start to go on that journey and start to sort of become more open about their feelings. And it also encourages people to not only be open and honest about their mental health, but to be honest and open about their identity and to not fit into the constricted boxes that we've had placed throughout the whole of time basically on people like if you're a boy you need to be like this if you're like a masculine yeah. jock you need to look like this like it really challenges so many outdated old school stereotypes what kind of stereotypes do you think have been placed on you at different times and you've really pushed through and pushed to a side i think being a teenager there's lots of like stereotypes of oh you you can't try at school because that's 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 not cool it's not cool to sort of care about your education and so I definitely I was always the kid who really did care about my education and really did try at school as much as I tried to make it look like I didn't that was definitely a stereotype that I overcame and I think it's something that Charlie overcomes as well I think he maybe previous to the season has sort of he knows himself I think that there's so many stories about like queer people coming out and getting to themselves but there's not enough about like charlie's experience is a universal universally relatable experience to a lot of queer people and that he's out but now what like that doesn't mean that everything's magically okay it just means that it's another he's more himself and and he's out in school but that doesn't make school any less difficult and so it's so great that we've been able to sort of tell that story as well of going overcome those stereotypes of of when charlie he's the only out gay kid in school and so that for him, that's that's something that he overcomes and he sort of gets used to as well. Because I think that although you may be over the stereotype, not everyone around you is. And people may still see you as that. And so Charlie goes on this journey of figuring himself out, but then figuring out how to navigate what other people think of him. Mm. I think that's so true because I've always said that like coming out for me was never just a moment it's not like I think there's this whole idea that coming out is like that and then it's like bam it's done but you're constantly kind of coming out in different ways yeah. every single day even if even if you're not queer there's moments when you come out about yourself about what's mm. going on inside your brain your mind your identity and I think that's such a powerful thing you've just said that coming out is a completely it's an ongoing process and it's never actually finished right yeah definitely I think that that's what's like it's such a great thing to show that but we in parts of we show both Nick's journey and also Charlie's journey. Charlie's journey is what it's like afterwards, whereas Nick's journey is sort of the start of it. And it's so great that Charlie's able to sort of be there for him and, and let him take his time. Because I think that people sort of rush before they're ready sometimes. And it's such it, it it's a big thing coming out. It's a big thing sort of telling people who you are. And so it's such a great that Charlie is there for Nick in a reassuring and, and gentle way. And he doesn't ever like rush him to make those decisions. And he never puts what he thinks onto Nick. And that's such an important thing and an important healthy thing to show queer kids and friends of queer kids and allies and, and everyone really. Take your time. But don't rush. And I think it's important to take that time to discover yourself and discover who you are right like everyone needs that time everyone should be afforded yeah that time to do it without feeling a level of pressure definitely definitely and then when we turn our attention to i think everyone is so chomping at the bit for the second season already and they've just even had the first season they're all re-watching it they're all loving it yeah but i think it's so interesting that when i was looking into the storylines that could happen in the second season i i think it's so interesting that the comics really deal with charlie's eating disorder which i think is such a powerful thing we need to bring to the screen there needs to be more representation around stories showing the journeys men go on with their bodies because there's not enough of that is that something you'd be really excited to explore and to bring it to the screen in the way that heartstopper does yeah i think i think definitely eating disorders whenever they're shown on screen are really shown from a more like a really dark and quite scary light and 
our show what it's done so greatly in season one is show issues that have previously been portrayed as a dark and scary and thing from an optimistic way and so you like for Charlie's eating disorder and for eating disorders in general, I think it's going to be really great to show that journey from an optimistic lens. It doesn't mean that the the negative aspect is diminished, but I think it it definitely would help people who are going through that and that actually they can get through this and they can overcome this this thing. Mm. And it, everyone goes on a journey with their bodies, right? And it's great to show that on screen yeah. in some format because there isn't enough of that kind of conversation around male body image at all like you don't really it's not really discussed publicly is it well i saw i saw a um a, i don't know it was a tumble thing it was like oh thank god they haven't cast the conventionally attractive um six-pack white male as the leads which i get as a compliment but it's a very backhanded compliment but um and it's i mean i they're right I mean, it's exactly that it's the, that's not the norm that's not the norm at all and we need to show more of the norm and what is normal because i think that especially on like big TV shows, unrealistic body images are shown as the norm. And also like who decided that was what we deem as attractive? Who was decided that what's, that's what we deem as good? Like that's a lot of effort to look, to have mm. a little bit more muscle. It's just a lot of effort. Oh my God. I mean, I'm not even willing to put in the bloody effort. Exactly. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'd rather enjoy my <laughs> Let's life. Let's just try and redefine what is normal to make it a lot easier for ourselves. <laughs> Exactly. 